Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us for another weekly edition of Condo Insider, which is um, put on by Hawaii Council of Community Associations. So the whole purpose is about ed educating our condo um, board members as well as the general public. So with me today, um, I have with me Norma Kopp. She is the director with Senior Medical Patrol. So she's going to talk to us about um, Medicare and um, also in her office, they handle, I'm not sure if some of you have seen their commercials, but they have commercials about fraud and scams. Um, and, you know, seniors are one of the most vulnerable people to for those scams. Um, so she's going to get, go through what they do in their office. And partly, we also want to talk about how some of this fraud, you know, we talk about seniors and se especially seniors in condos. You know, our maintenance fees are always going up. They will never mm -hmm. go down. So we have to try to be cognizant of every attempt where we can save money or, you know, where some seniors are paying things when they shouldn't really have to be paying for it at all. Um, like, I think when I was coming home on the TV, it said something about um, um, there's some agencies that can even evaluate your plans to see where you could have more potential savings. So this is part of a series that I'm doing on um, opportunities where seniors can take advantage of some of these programs um, to help them save money or, you know, find other services that they are eligible for at no charge. So. Um, let me bring on Norma, Norma Kopp. She is Aloha. The with um, Senior Medicare Patrol, also known as SMP Hawaii. So welcome to the show, Norma. So let's start off by telling us um, exactly what SMP Hawaii does. Thank you for having me, uh, Raylene. Uh, on behalf of Senior Medicare Patrol uh, Hawaii, we are part of the Department of Health um, and we're housed, managed by the Executive Office on Aging. Um, we are part of a national network of 54 fellow chapters across the United States in the territories of Guam, Puerto Rico, and the Bahamas, as well as uh, the District of Columbia, so total 54. And we've been here since 1997, so we just wrapped up our 25th year in Hawaii. Uh, we are a volunteer program, federally funded, and again, state managed by the Department of Health. What SMP does in its charge is to be sure that we assist and empower beneficiaries, uh, not just Medicare, but Medicaid as well, uh, um, those that um, need help. Uh, and we also address uh, concerns from their families and caregivers. And the whole thrust of it is to teach them how to prevent and detect as well as report uh, healthcare fraud, alleged fraud, or actual fraud, as well as billing errors and abuse. So the difference between abuse and fraud, just to make things really clear, is abuse could happen once and it, it may not involve other people. Whereas fraud, there's, there's an element of criminal intent that we can sort of scratch and sniff and follow. And at the very onset, if you're not sure who to contact, whether it's healthcare related or even a gift card scam or possibly worse, a romance scam, just call us and we'll have our number and all of the contact contact information available. Okay, so um, I know with seniors, a lot of times they get, um, I think my think on it, because I'm not at that stage yet of Medicare. So they get, sometimes they'll get billing, mm -hmm. for, especially for services that they never, or even a test that they never took. Right. Um, or even services, and it depends upon the plan that they have. Um, cause I think like state workers, they never have to pay anything out of pocket, but other, other private employers, they might have different, um, things within their plans of that right. nature. Can you go a little bit about that? Right. So, um, on that comment about state workers, it really depends on when you entered state work uh, as a public steward. Some people are grandfathered under the old plan or the former plan. Others like myself are in, under the new and current plan. So it's not carte blanche and it's not like we don't get we don't pay anything, but uh, it really depends on uh, entry of service. But um, going back to the whole thing about uh, summary notices. So these are not billing statements. These are quarterly statements from Medicare that come in the snail mail. And um, if you set up an online account with Medicare.gov, obviously you're going to be able to get your statement on demand. But sometimes it's difficult to decode all the different specs, the appeal section, or even just the front page. But it's very clear at the very top, it says this is not a bill. However, some kupuna will say, I never ordered this brace or 
why is there a duplicate record of this? So, you know, we'd like to think that we cut some grace to people that are working hard in healthcare. You know, some of this is unintended and human error, but as we know, with $70 billion plus dollars a year to false claims in the Medicare program, uh, Medicare has an insolvent issue. So this whole issue about making sure that you can understand and decode your billing statement, and if you don't know how, no shame, call us. We'll go over that. We have people um, literally in, in their 60, 70 years uh, age group saying, I live alone. I don't know what, what this is. And so... If it feels funny, if it doesn't look right, call us. We'll put your mind to ease. We'll make the calls. We'll connect with partners. You know, when you see companies like IRS, uh, Medicare, Medicaid, SSA, Social Security, just right off the bat, Raylene, everybody should know with Think Tech Hawaii, these agencies will, will not call you. They don't have the staff. They don't have the time. They're not going to call you. It's not efficient, but they will snail mail you for the most part. Right. They will not text you or email you. And same thing with banks. They're not, you know, it, it, if you did not solicit this, if you did not create an online account, assume that it's a scam. And these, sav these savvy scammers, this is their lifetime career. They're not doing anything else but working either solo or in groups, not just in the state or in this nation, but across the world. These are highly sophisticated um, networks of scammers. And, you know, now they're talking about artificial intelligence, which yeah, makes everything so look so real as well, right? Yeah. Let's pull up slide number four. So it's a really good, um, you have a little, a little bit of um, stats. Yes. Um, yeah. Cause we have like 10,000 Americans at yes. 55 each day. Yes. So, um, and in Hawaii, we have what one in four um, Hawaii residents is going is sixty five or even older. Right. Since nineteen, since twenty twenty, so a quarter of our one point four million population of residents sit in this baby boomer sixty five, you know, age the golden the golden era, right? The silver tsunami. But look at this. Um, this was you know, this is really startling that in seven years, in the year. 2030, we're going from a quarter to one third of the population here in Hawaii being, you know, silver tsunami. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So more, yeah. more on the stats is that, you know, when you think about 2017, I don't know about you, Raylene, but it feels like it was ages ago, but that was just six years ago. We had about 246,000 Medicare um, eligible um, individuals. Now, Double that amount in 10 years from, or in 20 years span, 2037, that is half a million projected in the population, half a million people um, by way of the baby boomers, right? We were born 1946 to 64. So I don't know when you were born, but that's the largest population in American history. They're all turning 65. Um, and so this solvency issue I was talking about is like a checkbook that's just just surviving on its last page, its last check. So what the volunteers do with SMP, whether they're counselors or they distribute information at, when they go shopping or, and everybody can do that in our volunteer team, or they're actually out there in the exhibits now that we're back in person, we're out there in the communities, right. or we're doing presentations like at various agencies now they're asking for in-person Zoom, MS Teams. What they're all doing is not just expanding the reach of X SMP, but they're trying to keep the integrity of the Medicare program so our children and our grandchildren can benefit from that. You know what? When we started working part-time, full-time, I don't know when you started. I started working when I was 15. Yeah. We started paying into the Medicare program. You know, yeah. that little tiny in the paycheck stub. I was working at Canteen Corporation at a little stadium. You know, I'm not going to give it up when it turns. I want that piece of benefit, right? So... Yeah, and, and thankfully, we work together as a team. We're part of Hawaii SHIP, meaning, you know, the Executive Office on Aging has our unbiased uh, counselors from Hawaii SHIP, State Health Insurance Assistance Program. We are SMP. We're sort of the state scam busters for health-related uh, fraud. And then we have our long-term care ombudsman volunteer program. Because the fraud is going to really um, dwindle, you know, the funds. I mean, even Social Security, yeah. every you hear about it's being like, no more, no more, you know, dwindling down, not going to be money, even though you paid into it. So right. we have to preserve what the people have paid in for the next generation of people. 
And right. you know, you sit still, you know, and it, it's just amazing how some people have nothing better to do. Yes. Create scams, you know. And people always say, uh, they take, they'll tell me, you know, after we, we do a phone call, they'll say, oh, thank you, because I really didn't think calling the police would help. But honestly, we work with um, law enforcement and they're very grateful. These beneficiaries are very grateful when we can salvage a little bit back for them. Timing is everything, really. When people call us, we're hoping that that scam just occurred or they woke up to that and like, we got to call S&P. When people dilly dally or they feel guilty or ashamed to call, I'm telling you, that is a big factor in the success failure rate. So the longer you take, because you just made grandma guilty, feel guilty because she just lapsed in her mind and she said she gave out her number, her Medicare number, her social, you know, we do that to grandma. It's not healthy. Uh, we shouldn't be shaming the victims that have already felt so bad about it. We should try to like muster up the courage. Yeah. Just call, just call and we'll try to myself. take care of it. Yeah. Cause I did what to myself once I got a text message about a package. And I'm like, so I, I put my, um, I clicked on the link and then I had to pay like $2. I'm like, after I did, I'm like, Raylene, you should not have done that. <laughs> no better. No. So all I did was turn around, call the bank. Nothing had gone through yet. And I, and I just said, well, I, I lost my card. You know, so that just stopped everything. Stop you everything. Know, right. You know, and this is, this is why it takes, we tell people it takes our entire state. We're not talking governor Josh Green state of Hawaii. We're talking about all of us looking out for each other. We have a lot of kupuna, either self-determined lives or just by consequences, they're living alone. They're living in isolated areas. We somehow got to take the time to look out for them because guess what? Yeah. Every day we wake up and the sun rises. We're that one day older. <laughs> we're yeah. sharing that road. We don't feel right. it, but let, one day we will. <laughs> I'm becoming aware that don't assume that the seniors are going to know, you know, I mean, I was talking to one that was, and I've known this woman for a couple of years. And I mean, I was talking to her and I go, you don't know what porn is. I was shocked. You know, and I'm mm. like, okay, has the pandemic isolated us too much that so we're not getting out? But I, it, you can't always just assume that people are going to know these things no, that you're some right. of us take for granted, right? Right. You know. So that's that's why in our mission, we talk about prevent, detect, and report. And prevent is really about education. So you're right. You know, cognitively, I don't know about you, but oh boy, as the decades wear on, I'm just like, okay, where, what was I doing? You know, so the idea of making sure that we remind people or put post-it notes by the phone or, you know, tell auntie, just hang up, you know, um, don't engage because savvy uh, scammers are recording, right? They're recording. They can, they can do voice impersonations. They, they have AI at their fingertips. They can be us. They're not really, they're, they're, they're fine with taking our money, right? That's great. That's control, but they really want to be us online. They want our identity. And yeah. so our three-step prevention here is just treat your Medicare card as you would like your your favorite credit card, you know, your 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 mileage plus card for your airlines. Treat it like platinum. Don't give out your card. And one of the tricky words people use these days over the telephone or text is what was your, you know, Miss Tenno, what was your Medicare card number again? You know, as they, they talk to you and say, oh, you have an appointment. We see you have an appointment. So you don't have to wait in line too long in the waiting room. You know, we're just checking to see, um, you know, we're just kind of cleaning up the, the files here. What was your Medicare card number again? This is a true story where the word again just tripped this woman up in, on Kauai. And she was smart enough or alert enough or just thought to call us. And we were able to replace that card within 10 days. And um, yeah, so even words like again. Um, they'll use your name. They'll make you feel good. But the bottom line is what scammers are really good at is they want to put you under the ether, E-T-H-E-R. And what that is, is this incredible mix of emotions that will make you feel urgent. I got to get it or scared or threatened or nervous or happy. They want to get you in this ether. And once they can get you under the ether, they got you. So we need to just take a step back, hang up, delete, permanently delete, get rid of our trash bin in our computer and put in that software that's going to help safeguard uh, a lot of these um, really dangerous um, notes. And going back to what you said about um, detect, um, mm -hmm. because even though the person's like not even sure, or even their family members are not even sure, it's still good to make that phone call to S&P because... Yes. Um, 
even though it may not be, it, it may be okay for that particular incident, but it's starting to develop a pattern. You know, that's right. Like mm -hmm. it starts just with one, you know, and they kind of like got away with it. But now, yeah. now you're getting multiple phone calls for the same situation. Right. So to me, that would be once you start getting like more than five, it's kind of like a red flag. There's sure. Some more to this than we're not, we're not seeing, you know, right. and it is a possible scam. So I think if any, you know, if people think it could be like something really small or might be minor. No, it could lead into something bigger. Right. That, um, that, you know, it's just enough. And sometimes all they need to do is scam how many people and for $10 and they, they could have a hundred thousand dollars in days. Right. And again, beyond the money, what's more valuable is for them to take our identity. And what they do with that identity is I can, if I'm the scanner scammer, I could take hold of all I need is your social security, like just your four digits, the last four. And I just need your DOB, your date of birth. And I can go to town on you. I'll open 10 credit card accounts and I'll start shopping on your name. And then I'm going to go after your, 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 your friends, your Calabash auntie, uncles. I'm, I'm not stopping at just your household. So I'll look you up. I'll look at property values. I'll see where you are. I'll Google map you. I'll try to connect the dots, which is pretty easy now. And um, yeah, I'll just make sure that I bring you down because now um, it's easier right? It's easier. I just need to take one down and then connect the dots with family and friends. Um, social media, you know, Facebook, it, it has its good purposes where you can be reminded of a class reunion or an anniversary. But oftentimes what was happening with the pandemic is people were showing their vaccination cards, like, hey, I got vaccinated. And you, if you zoom in, there's that date of birth. There's, there's all these elements for scammers to just, you know, just really um, mess you up. So people just be aware that when you post something, there's a downside to that as well. Just got to be really careful. Um, and I really think our younger generation, we got to give them credit. A lot of them sometimes don't get the credit they deserve, but they're the very ones that because they're, they're kind of savvy with online uh, devices, you know, and they're looking after their, um, you know, kupuna, it's important to to acknowledge them right now, the generation X and, and the younger generations, they're a little bit more, uh, a little bit more savvy, although 18 to 24 right now, that age group, they're the, they are the number one group to be scammed for purchase, uh, online purchases right now. But all the generations I've talked to the high schoolers and stuff, they, they're very aware because, um, not only are scams increasing, the types of scams are rampant. So there's Bitcoin, right? There's, we talked about romance scam. We dealt with a case with um, three checks going out to what a woman, an 89 year old widow who was very lonely, befriending somebody who she thought was a doctor in Korea. And she was asked by the doctor, supposedly her new lover, to help him with his medical practice and wrote three checks, 58,000, 80,000, and Add that up, Norma, 130000 for a total of $260,000 in two months. All gone just like that. And by the time the daughter called us after seeing a commercial, our commercial, it was like, I should have called sooner. I, I was just too ashamed. I was so angry. I was, yeah, it's all gone. So let's learn from these lessons. Timing is important. SMP should be like one of the first things you think about next to police. We will not just handle or address your healthcare alleged scams or actual scams and billing errors and, and things like that, but we will be a referral source and contact the agency that's most appropriate to deal with when it comes to non-healthcare scams. So we have offices in uh, with the Federal Trade, of, uh, Federal Trade Commission, FTC, in Los Angeles. So we work with their attorneys. We work down the street with Commerce and Consumer Affairs. We work with the Attorney General's office. We work with public safety uh, narcotics enforcement. We have different, um, we work with the bank security management, corporate security uh, folks. Um, you know, it's not just healthcare, but it's, we pivot will be the referral can I, source can I for non healthcare. Back to one, one thing that you said, because I yeah. want to make this clear. You had said all they need is your last four digits of your social security and your date of birth and they can find you? Well, that's pretty much the two core identifiers that can get them closer to um, honing in on, on just being able to 
identify you. So they, you know, if they, if they can find like, if they can find your social security number and the last four digits, there's just a lot of technology out there to be able to find that, right? And then because we're all pretty much all online, but we have to be careful. So I'll be really honest with you, Raylene, when I have certain forms that are in front of me and they're asking me for my social security number, I'll call the agency and say, do you really need that? Oftentimes the clerks will say, oh, you know what? That's just standard. We, they're not even thinking what's on the application anymore. It's an old form, right? Revised 2006 or whatever on the bottom of the page. Oftentimes we just, just by just not even thinking we'll put our social, mm -hmm. social security. And I think it's important for us to question that, right? In this 2023 year, people are still asking us for our social security number. I just would just draw a line across that. <laughs> like right now I have to fill out a form and it was to do an ACH on uh, my, they probably send this, even if it's encrypted email, I'm still like, can I, can you just call me from the office and I'll give you the number information? I'll yes. Number, but call me and I fill in the other part, you know? Yes. Uh, See, you know, so, so. We're, we're out of mind, right? But imagine Kupuna, 78 years old, uh, not knowing that perhaps that might be an option not to fill that portion out. What are they going to do? De because, DQ us? Uh, I don't know if everybody knows. Even if you only put in your account number, you still need the routing number. The routing number is on the websites, the bank websites. Yeah. So it's like so easy to fill in the rest, you know? So I'm like, exactly. give you the routing number, but call me for the account number. You know, yeah. but even still, I don't want to fill in as I want to fill in as least amount and then yes. you know, is the way I feel. That's yeah. So to just try to keep the message real simple for the viewers, it's really about just, just protecting your identifiers, your, your Medicare card number, your social security card number, your driver's license, all of that, just keep it close. Number two, educate yourself, learn. We, we have our website, smphawaii.org. Uh, we'll come out, we'll We'll come out to your, your audience, your family, your groups. You know, we'll do it on Zoom. We'll do it in person, what have you. Um, we're available. We have volunteers. We need more volunteers. We'll train. Um, and, you know, when something doesn't feel right, right, Raylene? You know, our head and, head and heart will always wrestle with each other. But there's a, there's a referee there, and that's our gut. It's our na'al. It's something deep down inside, below our stomach, that just is, just does not feel right. And that's what you need to follow is your gut call us, we'll help you as best we can. And a lot of times families will be really good about summarizing the facts. So we're not getting all over the place. We'll just say, could you just email us the facts? Just tell us when this happened, where did this happen? How did this happen? And then, you know, let's go from there. And, and so, so far, so good right now. And we thank our volunteers right now, because without them, there'd be no SMP anywhere. Okay. What's one of your, one of the ones that a call that you took in and it ended up being started out being kind of like, you know, just like here, but then eventually it blew into something big. What's, what's one example. you? Can okay. Do? Well, it's not healthcare related, but it could have been because it would have it probably impacted their resources for health plans. But bottom line is I got a call, uh, I, a, you know, fairly older gentleman um, who was calling on behalf of his parents um, from another island, I won't say which island, and he was calling, and he was rather calm for being shaken up by the news that uh, his parents got uh, an email that said that their account at such and such bank was being compromised, and uh, about 88 other account holders of the bank were in the same situation. So, okay, that to me was a flag, like 88. Not a lot, but enough. Okay, that was number one. Parents were under the ether. They panicked. They said, oh, okay. They were told, take $90,000 out, wire it to Hong Kong. The bank said it was a secured entity. And a lot of the um, other account holders were in the process of doing the same thing. Okay. So now more ether. They're under this cloud. They're like, okay, we got to get it done. Got to get it done. Boom. 90000 is gone. Okay. So something happened. Parents thought, what just happened? We better call our kids, right? So the son calls me, calls us and says, I, uh, I don't know where to go. I, I called police. I need help. I, 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 I'm getting the runaround from the banks, blah, 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 blah. So we got a hold of the banks, we got a hold of the police. We got, you know, I, again, talk to the investigators. Again, this is not healthcare. 
but we'll do our best as we can and then leave it to this process to take take its place. And uh, a couple of weeks later, the son called and emailed me as well and said that um, they were able to work through the case. And the investigators on that island said that in the five weeks they were doing multiple fraud cases, this one moved so quickly because the time was being honored and everyone worked together. And um, he credited SMP for like just you know, working with the family, you know, and being the facilitator. Were they able to pre, pre, um... They got, they're getting a check from the FBI, according to the son, no scam here, uh, with about $85,000 back. Oh, um, wow. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if they had. To, we're down to the end. Mm -hmm. um, let's just kind of review the prevent detect. Yes. Review that. So, we will be, we will uh, underscore the need to educate, continue to bring out this message that it's important to understand that not all errors are intentional, but with all the rampant scams and the different types of scams, technological, everything else, email, text, be really careful. What looks legit is probably not because if you didn't initiate it, how do they find you? right look look at look at the links that you're getting emails be really skeptical skeptical about offers that look pretty good or investments scammers will work very quickly uh, i wouldn't click on anything that is foreign i wouldn't click on anything that flatters you too much you know you are one of only 1100 da 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 i mean what yeah. um and a lot of these checks look so good like oh just cash this in 3820 i mean it looks so good and it's just enough right What's the harm? Big harm. Don't do it. And if our tellers are doing their job, they're going to stop you and say, Auntie, this looks like a scam. Can I just talk to my bank manager? So it does take a whole state, a whole community, right, Raylene? It's not just one household. So don't ever feel alone. Don't ever feel like, oh my gosh, my mom just got scammed. Shame. I don't like call. Call. Just contact us. We'll do our best. Um, timing is everything, like, like I said. Again, we're a volunteer program so to the extent that we have qualified volunteers and train them on and on that's the success of our program so we want to continue for another 25 years uh, we need everybody's help we need everybody to fight and and protect this place that's so precious this place called Hawaii there's no place like this on earth and I've lived elsewhere these volunteers are for real uh, if you want to make short impact and lasting difference and you talk about money, there's nothing more raw and necessary and critical than money. But more importantly, your legacy, it doesn't get any better than this. SMP Hawaii to volunteer for a program like this is, it's like a movement. It doesn't feel like just a program. So we want to thank all of our partners out there, our volunteers, our, our families who are patient with us, and um, all of those that uh, call in and, and ask for help. We're nearing the end of our time. So I want to thank you, Norma. Um, for coming on to the show today. Um, I think in a couple of weeks or next week, we have um, your uh, the other division, um, the yeah. ship, the ship people. And All right. um, that will be the other part of a segment that we're doing on, um, uh, particularly for aging in place kind of yes. thing. It's more than just aging in place because scams can be from a teenager on up. It's it, They have no, they're not discriminatory on age. You know? Correct. Um, I know my niece got one and with her bank account and, and that uh, had to laugh sorry. at that because she only had like, I think a dollar. And I, why'd you open the account with a dollar? <laughs> <She's> <laughs> to her, it must have been a lot. <laughs> and I'm like, you opened an account for a dollar? <laughs> so so that it takes. Yeah. <laughs> and scammers will go low, you know. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. But the bank caught it. Actually, the bank caught it. They the year, so they closed the account. <laughs> go, Yo, right on i know <laughs> okay. well, thank you i want to thank you very much um my pleasure pleasure and very informative and so again to people if you want to want to learn a little bit more they can do presentations in your office or in, or in, with your family they can mm. do that um and also they can also tell you a little bit more about volunteering and and even just volunteering you're going to learn a lot more about the smp and even, even just the detection and um, yeah. what you need to know. So being a volunteer, you're going to learn a lot um, when you do the volunteer. Um, and, it's, and it's very rewarding to make sure that we protect each other. So thank you, everyone, for joining us for another edition of Condo Insider. 
Again, Norma, thank you very much for being on the show. You're welcome. And thank you. Look forward to seeing you again. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.